How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video on five cheap and fun cars that you can buy for under £5,000. Last week I did a video on cheap and fun cars that you can buy for under £10,000. I asked for 1,000 likes and you guys smashed that and so here we are at £5,000 instead. And if you want to see the same video again but at under £2,000 instead, you know what to do, a thousand likes and I will make that video. So you can buy all 10 cars on this list for under 5,000 pounds and I reckon they are really fun to own. I'm gonna to talk to you about why I think they're fun to own as we go through the video. Don't forget that I'm in the UK so prices in other countries may differ and remember that only buy any second hand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, road tax, all that good stuff is important to remember. Let me know in the comments down below if you think I've missed any cars on this list. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. But without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's get it started with the Smart Rabus Roadster, a small sports car with an even smaller 0.7 litre turbocharged in 9.3 engine, which puts out 101 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 9.5 seconds. Now, this is not a quick car by any means, but it's an incredibly fun car regardless, thanks to its minuscule proportions, as it's only 3.4 metres long and 1.1 metres high, making it an absolute riot in terms of handling. Having driven one, it feels much more nippy than you'd expect, although my one personal bugbear is the gearbox, which is an awkward electric automatic paddle shift that is pretty sluggish. If you ignore this, the size and weight make this a really fun car, and in Brabus spec it gains additional sporty features like the Brabus alloys, a twin exit exhaust, lower suspension and a bunch of aesthetic changes both externally and internally. Plus there's only around 400 left on the roads in the UK so they're relatively rare. £4,000 is the minimum I could find these listed for and for five grand you're looking at a 2005 model with still relatively high mileage. There have been some reports of these overheating from standstill and servicing is super important to their longevity according to owners. In addition there are some known leaks and those stunning alloys are known to rust so be aware of this. It would be rude of me as an owner to not include this car on the list, the first generation Mazda MX-5 which comes as either a 1.6 or 1.8 litre inline 4, the latter putting out 131 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds. Obviously I'm massively biased towards these but if you've watched any of my MX-5 content you know I was never actually a fan of these before I drove it. I've driven many very fast cars but I'm yet to find anything that comes close to the fun that the Mark 1 MX-5 has given me. The handling is the key reason for this as even completely standard they go around corners far better than you'd expect and it only takes a few simple modifications to enhance this even more. And that's another key positive about these, mods. The aftermarket is massive and relatively cheap. I've done basically all the modifications I can think of to mine other than a body kit for under £8,000 including supercharging and I would say I've bought more expensive parts, you could do it for much cheaper. All that plus the fact that these are certified future classics and have been creeping up in price for years now and though I bought mine for a grand back in 2019, £3,000 is the lowest I could find them listed for now. For £5,000 you get a solid 1997 example though in good condition. Reliability is very positive from an engine perspective but the one thing I'd note is rust. If you buy one, inspect the underside and sills in particular as I'm almost certain there will be rust for you to sort out. Next up is a car cut from a similar cloth to the MX-5 in some respects, the Toyota MR2 GT with its 2 litre inline 4 engine that puts out 168 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. This is the second generation or SW20 MR2 and it benefits aesthetically from the fact that it took design cues from the Ferrari 348 and F355. As a result of this, it's often called the poor man's Ferrari by people in the know, but it genuinely is a really nice offering in its own right. It's a mid-engined, rear-wheel drive sports car for sub 5k that looks like a Ferrari if you squint from a mile or two away, which is already screaming fun. Add on the fact that it's starting to increase in value and gaining classic status, and this could be a good first classic car for someone just getting into the scene. The handling is known to be solid, helped by the fact that it was fine-tuned by professional racing drivers like Dan Gurney, who competed in NASCAR, Le Mans, and even F1. £4,000 is the lowest I could find these listed for and as these are relatively old and rare, you're still looking at quite high mileage for £5,000. One thing I'd note about these is that they went through 5 revisions over the different model years. I'll no doubt go in depth on these in a future video, but look for the facelifts you like most. Rust is again a problem on these, but worth watching out for oil leaks and don't buy one that has a history of overheating issues as head gasket failure isn't out of the question on these. Next up is one of my favourites and a car I wouldn't mind as a daily one 
one day, the Alfa Romeo Mito QV, which has a 1.4 litre turbocharged inline four that puts out 167 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.3 seconds. It sits on the same platform as the Fiat Grande Punto and Vauxhall Corsa D, and it actually has slightly more performance than the Abarth 595 that it shares its engine with. I think this car is specifically fun for younger drivers, as it's literally a QV Alfa, which provides the benefits you might expect from a QV, like more aggressive stylings, more performance focused features, and even carbon backed Sebelt bucket seats if you can find one in that spec. But it's also incredibly cheap to insure, in my experience, for young drivers, which I proved in a previous video. I would go out on a limb and say this is one of the best offerings for young drivers on the market who are looking for something that looks good, is quite rare, is reasonably quick, and is cheap to insure. And so for that reason, it's definitely a whole bunch of fun in my books. These are only just available at the £5,000 mark, and you're looking at around 60,000 miles on the clock for that money. The problems with these are generally electrical or relevant to the gearbox leaking. The engine is surprisingly good as it's built by robots with an unreal level of consistency, which is helpful. In sixth, it's another favourite of mine, the Renault Clio Renault Sport 197, which is a 2-litre inline-four engine that makes 197 brake horsepower, taking the car from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. In terms of value for money, this has to be one of the best cars on this list. It benefits from Formula 1 technology in terms of the rear diffuser, which actually helps to produce downforce, and the side vents, which cool the brakes. These, along with the short ratio 6-speed manual gearbox, larger Brembo brakes, uprated suspension, Recaro bucket seats on certain models, and the low price, help this car to be highly popular as a track car. With a bit of weight reduction and a few small modifications, these can be a really cheap route into getting out on track in a relatively safe way. The only key problem I'd mention is that gearbox though, as there are well-known synchro issues which basically requires a new gearbox. Some poor owners have had to change them after just 12,000 miles each time, which definitely isn't fun. So if you drive one, check for crunches particularly between the first four gears. £3,000 the minimum I could find these listed for, and for £5,000 you get a 2008 example with around 50,000 miles on it, but you could also get a cup for that kind of money. If you're enjoying the video, remember to hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. As I said, 1,000 likes and I'll do the same video under £2,000. And if you're new here and you're enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. It really helps me out and I'm trying to hit 100k before the end of the year. Onto the top five now, and in fifth is the second generation Ford Focus ST, which is a 2.5 litre turbocharged inline five, putting out 221 brake horsepower, which gets from 0 to 60 in 6.6 seconds. Originally, this was the range topper for the Focus until the RS arrived in 2009. That engine is actually a Volvo block and it has helped this car to gain a massive cult following, which following generations haven't been able to gain. Inline five engines are renowned for having a great sound and with great sound comes great fun in my books. Add on the fact that this car was developed by the same team that went on to develop the RS and you have a tasty recipe for performance, with larger brakes, stiffer suspension, a sportier interior and more aggressive body styling. On top of this, it's a great platform for modifications and it's relatively easy to get these to 300 brake horsepower, so you'll see plenty of personalised STs at car meets. For a top spec ST3, you're looking at a minimum of around £4,000 and five grand will get you a 2007 example with around 85,000 miles on it. The clutch is a known weak point on these and some specialists know issues with corrosion, split cylinder lines, a failing solenoid boost valve and alternator issues on early models. In fourth we have the Vauxhall Vectra VXR and though you can get a Corsa and Astra for this kind of money, I actually rate the Vectra as a fun car to own. It has a 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 which makes 251 brake horsepower more than any other car on this list, taking it from 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. When Vauxhall released the VXR range of cars, the idea was that they'd be for nutters, people looking to swap out refined, everyday comfortable driving with something exciting and raw. The cars weren't built to have incredible performance, with the focus on being simply fun to drive. This is clear with the Vectra, which many reviews note torque steers a fair bit. But what's fun about this is that it offers a hot saloon or estate, with a bit of flair, but also a bit of flex, knowing that the majority of people would have probably considered going for an Astra or a Corsa as the usual offenders. There are less than 600 of these on the roads in the UK, compared with over 6,600 Astras, for example. It's less a car for the track and more a car for Autobahn cruising with a top speed of 161 miles per hour. The lowest I could find these listed for is around 4,000 pounds, and for five grand you're looking at a 2008 example with around 100,000 miles on the clock. Overall, this is known to be a very reliable car, being relatively easy to maintain and parts are pretty cheap. 
There are known issues with the chain, misfires from spark plugs or coil packs failing, and a few other smaller problems that owners note. In third is the EP3 Honda Civic Type R, which is a VTEC 2 litre inline 4, making 197 brake horsepower but still managing 0 to 60 in 6.4 seconds. I mentioned this in a recent video on cars going up in value, and yes, this car is starting to become a little bit more collectible. There are a few things that make this car particularly fun, but its key feature is the performance from that K20 engine. It can be tuned to insane levels to create even more power, and like the MX-5, there's a massive aftermarket to take advantage of. The engine's VTEC system also engages at around 6,000 RPM, increasing the grunt all the way through to 8,050 RPM, meaning the most fun is had absolutely running these to the red line, assisted by a close ratio gearbox that lets you do that. I am gassing it up, but some people know the car lacks a bit of steering feel, so it's not a perfect car, but having been in one, I can confirm they are super fun to run around on the limiter. £3,500 is the minimum you'll find these listed for and at £5,000 you're looking at a 2004 model with around 100,000 miles on the clock. That K20 is also strong on these as long as the car is left to warm up before being thrashed and the cam chain is changed on time. We'll watch for synchro issues too if the gearbox has been savaged. In second we have the 986 Porsche Boxster although with the rate at which this car is increasing in value I wouldn't be surprised if by the time you watch this video they're already out of budget. It has a 2.7 litre flat at 6 which makes 220 brake horsepower taking the car to 60 in a civic matching time of 6.4 seconds. I mentioned the 987 in the previous video but the 986 is where it all started and like the MX-5 it's a certified future classic. This car boosted Porsche to greater success within the cheaper sports car space and though originally it didn't age so well with the fried egg style headlights I think it's now starting to look like a classic. But classic status isn't the only fun thing about this car it is fundamentally a Porsche and and therefore benefits from Porsche geometry and handling. This is proven by the fact that these have been used in the Boxster Cup here in the UK, which is highly popular. So if you want a car that handles well, offers classic status and is a convertible, get the MX-5. But if you want a premium badge on top of all of that, get the Boxster. These are only just available for under £5,000, starting at £4,500, while £5,000 will get your 2002 model with around 100k on the clock. Watch for cracked bore liners on these, as well as Vario Cam guide rail issues issues, IMS bearing failures and RMS failures as the key catastrophic problems. They're relatively well built from a structural perspective and rust is rare on these. Taking the top spot we have another potential future classic, the BMW Z4, specifically with the 3 litre inline 6 engine, the same as that in the 330ci which makes 231 brake horsepower and does 0-60 to in 5.7 seconds. It continued the Z lineage on from the smaller Z3, offering something a little more refined, updated and modern. Sub 6 seconds to 60 is a real bonus too, especially when you consider that the Z4M isn't that far off in terms of out and out pace, but costs around 10 grand more. It sounds good, has enough power to cruise along the motorway at low revs, and with enough throttle, will step the back out and let you power slide quite comfortably. Add in the more premium interior for a car of its age, and the fact that I reckon one day we'll look back on these in a positive light, and you've got a great offering in the Z4. The only thing that I think lets it down is as it's naturally aspirated, it's expensive to get much more power out of it according to owners. This car starts at around the £3,500 mark and for five grand, you are still looking at relatively high miles. Of course there are examples in better condition available with smaller engines. That engine is generally reliable but worth noting that Vanos seals can cause issues. Regular oil changes are key and strangely the rear springs have been known to crack but despite the badge, spare parts aren't horrendously expensive. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did remember to hit the like button I would really appreciate it and subscribe as well if you're new. Massive thank you to the Patreon so they continue to support and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.